Hello, am I here? Facebook, Instagram, hi. Sorry, I'm like nine minutes late. Um, technical difficulties, how about that? We'll just, we'll just sum it up to that, technical difficulties. I'm going to sit back. So today we're gonna do, and my shirt might keep unbuttoning. It's like got small buttons. It's from Rent the Runway, I love it. But it's unbuttoning too frequently. Um, so today, we're going to do another story of hope, which I love doing these. We did a ton for you guys in September, and um, today we're going to do another one, and my shirt's going to keep unbuttoning, so let me see. I'm just going to sit still, and it's not going to unbutton. Hi, I'm Amy Raup of amyraup.com. I am the author of this book, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, and let's see, these two books too, Chill Out and Get Healthy, Body Belief. And I have been in the business of helping women um, live their best life, achieve um, vitality, grace, health, fertility uh, for 17 years. I've been a clinical practice as an acupuncturist and herbalist. And then I've been an author for, I don't know, 10 or 11 years and have an online business for the last four years. I coach women all over the world on ways to optimize their health, their vitality, their fertility. And I get to come to you live every single week and talk to you about interesting topics that, you know, can help you live your best life possible. And once a month, we do stories of hope from women that I've worked with, uh, either in my clinic or coaching them around the world. And I'm going to share a great story of hope this week with you. Yes, Luis, I'm feeling much better. As you guys can see, this sty, I had a massive sty last week. It's still pretty massive, but I feel 150,000% better than I did this time last week, which is amazing. And I'm very grateful for the resiliency of my body and how healthy I am. Um, but I did, I had like a triple sty infection that took me down. And now I'm back. Now I'm back. So, what I like to do with these stories of hope. So this woman, um, you know, again, I coached with her. I never met her physically in person. She uh, did a five pack of coaching with me. And then also is a member in my Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course. She came to me at the age of 40. And... Um, this is her new patient paperwork. So what is the main reason for seeking treatment? Fertility and better overall health. I would like to have a baby using natural methods. Um, so she is open to suggestions that relate to fertility and nutrition. Um, she had had one child already um, about 10 years prior and um, had a, a miscarriage right before that pregnancy, well, a couple years before that pregnancy, then got pregnant, and then um, decided to try for another child about eight years later, got pregnant, had a miscarriage, had to have a DNC, and then now she's coming to me. So she had a DNC for a miscarriage in 2018. She started working with me um, about, um, let's see, in July of, oh yeah, so she had a miscarriage January 2018. In July 2018, so seven months later, she started working with me. So she got pregnant pretty quickly in, I think, December of 2017, miscarried January 2018, then couldn't get pregnant again, uh, reached out to me. Her MD thought everything was, was pretty fine and dandy. Um, some anxiety, um, Drink some alcohol, four to five drinks a month. Um, not that great on sleep. Her diet when she came to me, half a grapefruit, hard boiled egg, whole wheat toast, nut butter, flaxseed, grilled chicken, turkey sandwich, gluten free chips, meat, veggie for dinner. Um, she loves fruit and um, had some traumatic stuff in her life, has done therapy on and off for years, gets a cold or flu once a year. Um, her goal was better overall health and nutrition and hopefully a more positive mental outlook. I tend to be quite hard on myself and let negative thinking take over a large portion of my thought process. Um, I'm sure you guys can relate to that. When it came to her red flag symptom list, um, she had quite a few checked off on here. 
headaches, decreasing vision, dry eyes, dry skin, dry scalp, eczema, um, some night sweats before her period, dizziness, bruise easily, palpitations, chest pain, tightness, cold hands and feet, some digestive issues, reflux and digestion, bloating, gas, um, frequent urination, mood swings, depression, insomnia, restlessness, indecision, too hot, too cold. Um, her menstrual cycles were 29 to 30 days long. She bled for three to four days. She had had three pregnancies, two miscarriages, one child. Um, and so there we have it. Okay, so the very first call we do. Um, so, um, yeah, so she, last summer, this time, she decides they want to start trying to get pregnant. Um, her and her husband, they're excited about it. Um, she gets pregnant three months into trying, and the baby stopped growing at seven weeks, but didn't find out till 10 or 11 weeks. Um, and the due date would have been in August, and we are started talking in July, so she's feeling really emotional about it, too, because the due date's coming up. And I know you guys can relate. Um, any woman who's had a miscarriage can totally relate to that. So she wound up having um, a DNC. Um, and then she said since that DNC, she's been obsessed with charting sex, being hyper aware. Her anxiety is very, very high. It's not happening. All looks good, um, according to the doctors. But she's also almost too anxious to get any more blood work or find anything else out. Um, she's trying to figure out what she was doing back when she got pregnant last time. Um, she said things like, I'm not worthy, I'm being punished. Uh, she now feels like she has too much knowledge on fertility. She's read too much and she needs to unlearn. And that's why she's hired me. She's like, I just want you to be my point person. You tell me what to do. You tell me what supplements to take. I've, I'm, you know, I know you guys can relate. Like Dr. Google is at some point doesn't become your friend. It becomes too much. It's too overwhelming. Um, and so she, when we broke down some of her beliefs, she says, I do see a baby, baby, but the negative voice is dominating. She, her belief systems, I am in the way I self-sabotage myself. I'm not worthy. Why should I get more? Um, I'm still afraid. She has a lot of guilt and shame. So there was a lot of this negative emotion. Um, then we got her to talk about the things that she loves to do, um, Talked about her period, uh, PMS, tension, muscle aches, um, breaks out, um, and she feels like she has two good weeks in a month, and then one week where she's insecure, and one week where she feels major rage. So, um, just was emotionally so distraught, you know, and anxiety was a thing for her in the past, but the miscarriage had really brought a lot up for her. Um, her period, she spots one day and then she has a heavy period, changes the super every three, to three, three times a day, then medium, no clots, no cramping. Her bowels get a little softer. Um, she's on a probiotic, a prenatal, vitamin E, vitamin C, CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid, uh, green superfoods, cod liver oil, um, diet helps the anxiety, but beating herself up, um, and she said to me, too, I, I can't be too restrictive. I want at least one cheat day. And I said, okay, we can we can figure that out for you. Um, and I want to share with you my follow-up to her, the recommendations I made. Um, be certain to eat some protein, like a handful of nuts upon within the first 20 to 30 minutes of waking. Eat every two to three hours after that. Start sending me a food diary. I give her a sample gluten-free, dairy-free menu, um, some smoothie recipes. I gave her my MTHFR guideline packet because she hadn't yet been tested, but she was assuming she had the MTHFR. And based on her anxiety, um, I assume that she probably has it too, along with the COMT gene, um, just what I've learned in doing genetics for a while. Um, I added in um, a supplement called NoroCom for anxiety. In addition to the supplements that she had, I had her work on some belief systems. I sent her a questionnaire. Um, I also asked her to take some time and write a letter to the baby that she lost. Say whatever feels right to you to say and focus on allowing yourself and the baby to be released from one another. Invite the baby to come back and stay if that feels right. 
Each day, write down five ways you are doing good for yourself or for others. If you can, go one step further and write out five ways in which you are worthy of all you desire. I gave her a tapping video, emotional freedom technique to help with trauma and releasing. Um, and yeah, she, you know, really appreciated um, the follow-up email. She she dove right in. She she was following the food stuff. Um, we talked again in um, oh, about a month later. Um, internally resisted my suggestions. Realized she was thirty seventy instead of I like the eighty twenty rule. Um, realized she doesn't feel like herself. She doesn't. Um, I want to be in a better mindset. So we talked about how can I nourish myself? How can I, um, you know, be a, like treat myself better? And she was really hard on herself because she felt like she wasn't stepping up to the plate. She was noticing her anger. Um, she did do the letter to the baby. Um, she also met with a therapist um, and she felt like there's no room for a baby in my life. Um, and so we, we, we talked a lot about that emotional piece. Um, and we talked about the questionnaire that she filled out. She felt like she's losing herself in this process. Um, she's worried about her egg quality. What if I don't have any good eggs left? Trying to feel it all. She doesn't believe in her body. She feels sad. She feels overwhelmed. So it was a very deep emotional conversation um, in that session too. And then um, by August... Um, diet wise, by the end of August, um, she was really pulling back into the reins. Um, she decreased gluten. She noticed garlic was bloating her and on onions give her red itchy skin. So we talked a little bit about FODMAP foods. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, you can Google it. F-O-D-M-A-P. Um, she was avoiding soy. She was feeling better. Um, she ovulated and, um, self-worth stuff has been coming up. She's been hard on herself. Um, she was working on things that bring her joy. So we started to get her to focus and shift. And she was working on a worthiness journal. She realized that fear rules her. She's, she said, I'm either happy or I'm a bitch. Um, and uh, a lot of self-judgment. Uh, so, you know, it just was all this worthiness stuff that kept coming up for her. Um, she felt very like life felt very unfair to her, which I know many girls who've been in the fertility journey can a hundred percent relate to that feeling of it just not being like, why me? Why is this so unfair? Um, and you know, what can I do to get out of that shift? And so, um, so yeah, we, um, would be proud if, um, Proud of the woman who she's become. So this is what we get to. And she's proud to start to identify, this is how I'm feeling. And so we're working on healthy boundaries for her, a sense of worthiness, stepping into her powder, power. Um, then we talk the following month, um, feeling very good over the last few weeks, no gluten, no soy. Um, and she's felt a major shift in her emotions. Um and her period came, it was still normal, healthy. Of course, she was bummed about it, but she feels so much like herself. She lost eight to 10 pounds. And this is the realization she's come to in our work. I'm doing this for love. I'm doing all of this, the dietary changes, the emotional work, um, I'm doing this for love. It makes me wanna cry. Um, she said, I finally feel like myself again. Physically, I feel, I feel there, I feel present. So this was, um, September 2018. She then also joined the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course, um, which, so she started coaching with me before the e-course had opened. Then the e-course opens, and then she she really dives into the e-course and um, gets, like, super excited, um, is really enjoying all the modules of the e-course, um, and super excited. And so then I hadn't heard from her in a while. Um I have a fifth session here somewhere, but she sends me an email um, in December. Um, where is my, I got a question. Okay, anyway, I can do this off the email. She sends me an email in December. Um, 
It's a little slow as I was hope, hoping I would be sending a different note. Last Friday, so this is December, 2018. This is a year after her first miscarriage or her, her miscarriage. Um, she had another miscarriage. Um, when I went in for my first ultrasound, we found that the sac was empty. It had started out okay, but did not continue that way. I've thought about um, and talked about it so much that I feel I have all the words and none of the words at the same time. I am heartbroken, but I am taking it one moment at a time. And for now, I want to look forward and can't give up. I still feel my baby heavy on my chest and in my heart. I want to focus on what I can. And the positive is that I have gotten pregnant twice and both were within a few months of trying. I don't want to derail the good work that I have been working on, but I can say that I need a better balance and management of my stress. I walked into this process with such a happy heart and positivity and sadly through the process, I have grown angry. Um, I can't see the forest for the trees. I lost myself in the process and forgot to live the rest of my life. Thankfully, I have a wonderful therapist who's working with me. Um, another good note is my doctor says everything looks healthy and normal with my reproduction. Um, and, and this is the first time in my life that a doctor besides my dentist has told me I'm normal. He said, my ovaries look good, a good egg, good sperm. We just need a good combo. Um, in an effort to look forward, what can I focus on in a more balanced way, um, is my continued nutrition. It's about 90% on point and I'm tweaking a few things. I still follow the guidance from you. Um, I want to cut back further on dairy. So she hadn't completely eliminated dairy at this point, And she wants to, um, cause that, if you guys remember, she said, I just need one cheat day a week and I gave it to her. So then after this miscarriage, it was like, okay, we've got to tighten the reins a little bit more. Um, supplements stayed the same. Um, she was putting in the daily bone broth at this point. Um, and so she's feeling really good. Um, through January, um, we're emailing. I say, I want you to keep being kind and loving to you. You are doing so much good for your body. Keep it up. This baby is coming in soon. Um, and then uh, March 20th, um, and she's a little concerned. Um, some things came up for her husband's health. So I'm giving her some advice there. I recommend the daddy diet. We do some things. Um, for, for that, um, and June 24th, 2019, um, so this is now a year since we've been working together, um, less than a year, eight months. I just wanted to drop you a quick note and let you know that I got a positive pregnancy test this morning. So that's two positive pregnancy tests since she's been under my mouth, one miscarriage. I'd like to say I'm happy, but I'm actually freaking the fuck out. I'm so terrified. I, it's really early, so trying to be realistic, but I just feel lost and confused. I'm having my HCG test done on Wednesday and Friday of this week, so hopefully that will go well. My fear comes from the past test being good, and then it's still ending bad. So far, there are too many similarities to the past pregnancies, and I'm scared. And I know many of you can relate to that. Um, you know, a lot of women think that once they get the positive pregnancy test that they're just going to be happy and joyful. And for a lot of women, it's actually a really scary time. And a lot of the trauma comes up. And so this woman was really experiencing that. And she felt safe and trusting in me. And she had a therapist and a good partner. And so she was working through it. Um, anyway, um, if you could send all the good vibes you have, that I would be so grateful. So this is June um, 24th. I said all the good vibes you're sending your way, sending so much love and light and ease to you. Let's just ride this and celebrate each milestone as it comes. Fingers, eyes, ears, everything's crossed. Um, and so then I checked in on her about a week later. Uh, it's going okay. I'm doing the best I can, taking it one day at a time. Some days are more scary than others, so I try to take it one minute at a time. I feel like I'm Spend pretty much every day praying for everything to go okay. My beta tests so far have been good. Um, they're doubling. Uh, it's an emotional roller coaster for sure. And trying not to tell anybody, they don't want to jinx it. Um, so about three weeks later, I wanted to let you know I went for my first appointment last week. We did an ultrasound and it showed a sweet little peanut. It looked great. And my doctor said it measured perfect and the right size for the date. Today I'm eight weeks, one day. Um, and we got, yeah, we got to see a beautiful heartbeat. Everything's amazing. I'm doing my best to be hopeful and enjoy this, but still so terrified. Every pain or weird feeling freaks me out. I pretty much pray all day, every day. We're going to wait a little longer until we tell, tell everyone. Um, and I write back how excited I am. And, um, and then August. So now she's, um, 
just want to share a little update. I went for another appointment on Thursday. The baby's heartbeat was 160. We got to see a few more images. All looked well. I'm sorry I didn't. I'm not better at giving updates or communicating. I'm better at giving support to others than asking for anything myself. My anxiety has been at a level that I haven't experienced in a very long time, and I've been having trouble managing it, but I'm trying to do my best. We are doing the genetic screening and all that um, next week, so I'm just trying to make it to the point in one moment at a time. If you have any guidance on how to be positive and make it through these tests, I would love your thoughts. I hope to feel more comfortable with the idea of telling people after the screening, I'm working on letting myself feel moments of joy. I do want to thank you and tell you how grateful I am for all of your love, support, and wisdom. It means more than you know. To know that you're always out there holding space and praying for me creates an amazing level of comfort, especially to someone like me who struggles with anxiety. I appreciate how understanding and compassionate you are. Um, and so beautiful email, uh, 11 weeks, three days. Um, and you know, I sent her some really promising, um, upbeat notes there, trying to get more vegetables in. We were talking about some diet stuff. Um, and then at the end of the month, um, the genetic screening, everything looks good and yeah, baby is healthy. So she gets to take this one home, which was amazing. Um, and I just want to share um, October 15th. I wanted to give you a quick update. I'm happily 21 weeks today. We went for the sonogram. Everything looked amazing. The baby was beautiful moving around. It has everything it needs. Uh, my anxiety has gotten much better. It's still there, but I keep praying and doing the best I can. And, um, and here we are. She sends me a beautiful 3D picture. And um, 24 weeks, everything is looking good. And 32 weeks, everything's looking good. And then she sends me a beautiful picture of her beautiful pregnant belly. Makes me want to cry. Um, and, and then I got a beautiful email in March with a beautiful baby picture in here. And weighing seven pounds and six ounces. So, so there you have it. Um, nice story of hope from one of my girl, um, um, I'm usually 23. Okay. I'm going to read that in a second. I just want to see. There's no, am I live on Instagram? This is so weird. I don't think I'm live on Instagram, Beth. Did you just, <laughs> anyway, hi, Facebook. Um, I'm just realizing that Instagram never went live, so that's okay. Or maybe it turned off, but we'll, we'll upload this and put it on Instagram in the story. So, so to just go over <clears throat> the changes that she made was, um, you know, we tightened the reins on her diet. We did a lot of the emotional work, worked through a lot of the fears and the anxiety and the worthiness issues. And then when she did get pregnant again under my belt um, and had another miscarriage, that's when we tightened the reins a bit more where it was like, okay, we're going to, um, we're going to get more strict and we're going to really cut the dairy. She was always gluten and soy free, but we're going to cut the dairy. We're going to, um, you know, increase the vegetables. We're going to get on the bone broth every day. And, um, you know, within, uh, three or four months after that, she got pregnant again with a healthy baby boy and carried that one to term. So I think it's good to, to see cases like this too, because, you know, we, although we didn't know her FSH or her AMH, she was 40. Um, by the time she gives birth, she's much closer to 42 at that point. So she's 41 when she actually gets pregnant, um, again and carries the term. And so, um, Many doctors would have told her her age was a factor and maybe she needed an IVF and all of these things, but she stayed the course and she wanted to do it as naturally as possible. And we kept making tweaks along the way and she was getting the emotional support from the women in the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course. And, and it worked. And she still comes and cruises around that Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course. So, um, yeah, it's a habit. So for some reason, Instagram is looking like it is live, but it's really not. So I don't know what Instagram is doing. Um, my team is messaging me. 
Um, I don't know what happened, but so anyway, it's fine. But we'll, um, it's just habit, Beth. Um, we'll get this video up onto Instagram later. So all those changes add up. That's right, Celeste. It's not easy, but you can do it. Having the group support is priceless. I agree. Um, and then this is a question. Um, um, okay, so Nikki, um, uh, I'm following your fertility plate, adding liver pills, thorn methyl gar, drinking bone broth, adding the herbs. I didn't get pregnant last month as I had hoped, but after only one month, I got my first 28 day cycle. So I'm really satisfied with that and praying for this month. Um, thank you so much. Um, wow. So her cycle length improved from 23 to 24 days, um, to 28, which is amazing. Amazing, amazing story. So yeah, I feel bad that I'm not live on Instagram right now, but that's okay. We will that's why I keep looking up my phone for Instagram is up there, guys, just so you know, we will get this up. Um, so yeah, another beautiful story of hope. And I believe that baby boy is now um, a year old. Yeah, just a year old, which is amazing. Wait, is that true? No. Um, no. Not a year old. What month? What year are we in? So no, he's uh, six months old. Okay, so there you have it. Do you guys have any other questions right now um, about this case? All right. Well, I'm going to hang up, and I'll see you guys next week, okay? And we'll get this live. Um, if you guys want, I think, I think a really nice um, meditation that actually I did create around the time for her is my um, you are safe meditation so if you guys want free access to that we'll put the post the link up here and you guys can go and access that and um, never underestimate the power of the emotional piece here and the power of the worthiness and really for her the biggest thing was stepping into knowing that she was doing this for love love of herself love of growing her family love of this child to come through and that was really what motivated her to then stay the course and, and make all the changes that she made and receive the support and guidance that she she needed. Okay, so we'll say we'll share that um, you are safe meditation. And I'll see you guys next week. So Instagram, when you watch this, you can just DM us for that I am safe meditation and Facebook will post it here. Okay. All right, guys, have a wonderful day.